Sometimes in my fussing and tinkering, I go way beyond what's reasonable and do things that are into the realm of mad scientist. And I think I've gone a little bit too far this time, but there's a reason for that. I've been trained into this behavior and it's NVIDIA's fault. Maybe also a little bit of just the industry and how we have allowed these graphics card profits prices to continually rise and rise and rise. And then we're scalping them. And obviously it's working because people are going online and paying 2X for the price of a GPU, 2X like the retail price of a GPU for secondhand stuff. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, no, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense, no copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm going to grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of windows 11 pro all right, I just put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. So I decided that I wanted to upgrade my GPU and that's mainly because of MechWarrior. My rule is generally if I can't play a game on the medium or high settings uh, without it stuttering or feeling terrible, then I start thinking about like upgrading my GPU. And MechWarrior 5 is a game that I've put a lot of time into and I want it to run really well but I've got a problem. My monitor is 3840 by 1600 ultra wide. It's a 21 by nine ratio, but it's got a few extra pixels on the on the bottom to make it thick. Um, 3840 is nice, nice and wide. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's having a hard time running with my mods and stuff. And then some of the other new games that are out, Unreal Engine 5 games just have trouble all the way across the board. I don't play a lot of those because older games are generally more fun. But I started thinking, you know, once the five series cards come out, the four series cards will be I guess a little bit less expensive, so I could look at those. I had a 3080 Ti and it was playing the game okay, but it was a, one of the big maps, just not cutting it. The whole 5 Series thing came out, right? The NVIDIA 5080s, 5090, whatever. I expected it to be a lot better than it was, but I feel like that drove up demand for other GPUs. I mean, people are still gonna buy those things and scalp them or whatever else, but I've noticed that all of a sudden there's a huge demand for the 4 Series and they didn't go down in price. They actually stayed the same online. So I started feeling a little bit of panic. Now, in order to get my 3080 Ti, this is the part of the story you have to like come along with me a bit for. In order to get my 3080 Ti, I refuse to go online and let a scalper take advantage of me. I'd rather take advantage of myself by doing stupid things. So let me tell you how I got my 3080 Ti. I went over to iBuyPower.com like this. This is a simulation. This is not really how it works. And I was looking for like a good sale. Like, ooh, and I did find it was like a holiday sale that was like, you get an extra hundred something dollars off. I just like, for instance, grabbed something like this. And then I went over and I was like, let's just get the cheapest stuff in every category. So I went through and did all the cheapest. And then for the graphics card, I came down and I picked a 3080 Ti. And I put a rocket on a, you know, a Pinto essentially. And that's what I bought. And I got a message like as I was buying it being like, sorry, this is not compatible. The, the power supply is just too low power. And I messaged with the people and I was like, I don't care if it doesn't work. They're like, we can't do that. They're probably worried about customer service because as soon as I get it, I'm going to call and be like, hey, it doesn't work. That thing you told me doesn't work. It doesn't work because that's how people are these days, right? Anyway, so I got it. I pulled the 3080 out and I put my old GPU in. I forget what it was. I'm probably a 1080 or you know, GTX 1080, which was awesome. Put that in there. And then I sold the iBuyPower as a complete unit. Took some really pretty pictures with all the, you know, stuff glowing. It did have water cooling in there. So that that's for some reason. If someone buys a PC, they're like, whoa, look at them tubes, man. Love it. And I took some nice pictures of it, put it online, and I sold it at a price that would have made the 3080 Ti about a hundred bucks under the going retail value. Now, meanwhile, the 3080 Ti on eBay at this point in time was going for you know, like 1.5x retail values, people were scalping it. So I felt like this genius. I was like, aha, I ended up somehow getting the 3080 Ti when you do all the math. 
for a hundred bucks less than retail. So when it came time to do it all again, you know, I started looking at everything that's going on with the five series and all this nonsense. And then the AMD stuff came out, the 9070 XT or whatever, the XT 9070. And I was like, ooh, that could be a good way to go. But there's the thing that I really like and that's physics. I, I like physics, it's cool. You know, Nvidia grabbed up physics and threw it into their stuff, but there's a problem now. So we got the new five series stuff coming out. They don't support 32-bit CUDA, which is what you need for the old games running physics. Now we're talking Mirror's Edge and all the Batman Arkham games and about a gazillion games of all the old games that support physics, which is really cool. I like it. It's fun. I like not watching walls fall down. I feel like that's a very underused technology and people are like, oh, it's all done by Havoc and whatever now. But yeah, that's cool, but I don't see it as much. Back then it was like a cool thing. It's like, oh, look at this tornado tear down a wall. And I was like, that, it's cool. I want, I like that. Look, you could drive your tank right through this. Sure, that technology is there and available now and it could be really good, but is anybody using it as well? Maybe a little bit, but not quite as much. Anyway, I have gone off on a tangent, but that's just what you're here for, right? You're coming along with me. So anyway, I was like, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get myself a 4080. And I started kind of a little bit panicking because online everything was good. Like the 4080 on eBay was going for like 13, 1400 bucks. And I was like, huh, a 4080 super that is because I wanted the super. And I was like, well, what's going on here? Why is this going for that much money on eBay? So I was like, ah, I know what to do. The, the 4080 is going for $500 more than retail. I am going to go grab a pre-built. So I looked around. There was one on Best Buy that looked pretty good. Um, it was an HP Omen. And so I was like, oh, that one's got a 4080 in it, but it looks just like a stock 4080 or like an OEM version 4080 with the big fat cooling unit on it. And I couldn't find out much information, but I did find out this. It fits into my case with about a millimeter to spare. And I was like, okay, so that one might work. Now the Founders Edition probably would fit a little bit better into my case but the Founders Edition was going for about five or $600 more than I wanted to pay. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get, get this HP. I messaged HP or I looked at HP's website and started doing like the little live chat thing. And while talking to the person, I told him I'm just gonna buy it on, he's like, hey, you wanna buy this? I'm like, it's on Best Buy. I'm just gonna grab it over at Best Buy. And he was like, I'll give you $400 off. And I was like, sold, I'm buying it. So yeah, got this PC. This HP Omen in white is beautiful. It's really pretty. Didn't take a lot of video of it, but so I got it. And the first thing I did was turn it on and it was like, it went into windows and then stopped like five minutes in black screen, nothing. So I was like, that's weird. It doesn't work. So I was like, I'm just gonna take this GPU and play my game for a little while. So I took the GPU out, started playing my game. And I was like, I'll worry about that later. You know, when it gets closer to time to return this thing, start fiddling with it or whatever. Cause I just wanted to, I wanted to play Mac Warrior 5. So anyway, a couple of weeks go by and I'm like, all right, I really should mess with this thing. So I took my 4060, popped it in there just so I could have a GPU in there and I, it wouldn't go back into Windows. I turned it on, would not go back into Windows. So I was like, oh, I can't really sell this if it's not gonna work, right? I reinstalled a fresh copy of Windows and I was like, maybe that's it. I just wiped the hard drive, reinstall a fresh copy of Windows 11, which is what came on it. So I installed that and it did the same thing. It actually booted into Windows, but after about five or six minutes, it, the screen just went black. At this point I was like, not worth my time. This is not fun. So I didn't exactly know what to do. I was like, oh, I can't believe I've gone through all this mess just to get this stupid graphics card. You know, now it's time to resell this stupid PC, but it doesn't work. So if I don't know if you've ever used the, the BIOS on one of these HP Omens, don't recommend it. It's a terrible experience. There's basically no BIOS on this thing. It's just so locked down, but they do have some HP diagnostics right on the main screen. It's really idiot proof. I mean, they must think, they must have a very low opinion of the people who buy these things. What does that say about me? Oh God. Anyway, so I ran through all of their tests that they have. They have a test for the RAM, they have a test for the, the CPU stress test, and they also have a test for the M.2. I ran all those tests, everything passed, everything was fine. So at this point I couldn't figure it out. I messaged them and they were like, there's gonna be a restocking fee. And I was like, just let you know, I've uh, been taking video the entire time I was troubleshooting this thing. So if you wanna see that, I can let you have it. Their response was return approved. That was it. They didn't, they, like there was nothing else. They just, it said return approved and a label. They didn't say, show me the video. They didn't say anything else. They were just like, okay, just whatever. I don't think, I think they just like, okay, what if this guy, we're done. We don't need to deal with this. So I was like, cool. Maybe I could have fixed it. That's, I, maybe it was the RAM. Could have been the, could have been the frequency on the RAM. I couldn't get into a part of the UEFI or the BIOS 
where I could figure out how to even change the, the ramp speeds or, you know, set up the profiles or anything. I couldn't figure out how to do any of that nonsense. And sure, I could have installed Ryzen Master, but that would require installing Windows. Yet again, I installed it like four times on this stupid machine because every time it would reboot, it would go into a reboot loop. And then when I tried to do the repairs, it would be like Windows cannot repair and just did not work. So I would literally have to reinstall it by wiping the hard drive and then it would boot into Windows one time and crash after like five to ten minutes. I was able to install a couple drivers once, but maybe I should have installed Ryzen Master and tried to mess with it. And there's a lot of people who've been very helpful. I posted this online. They're like, hey, have you tried this, tried that? I'm not going to try anything else. That was what, basically my thing. I was, you know, when I talked to the guy, he was like, oh, you got to try all this troubleshooting stuff. I was like, no, I bought this fancy computer for a lot of money. It should work. If it no work, I am not going to fuss with this thing. Like, I didn't buy this to fix it. I bought it to steal the graphics card, but I bought it to use it. You know what I mean? So anyway, my plan backfired big time and I had to send everything back and I had to pull the 4080 back out of my system. And I got so mad doing that that I bought an ATX case because I'm sick of that little ATX, little micro ATX case. I'm not sick of it, I love it, but I'm sick of having to deal with it. So yeah, I, I ended up um, going on eBay. And then when I got back on eBay, everything worked out in the end. The prices, by the time all this nonsense had, had blown over, I think all the panic buying had settled down a little bit because the prices were down like three or 400 bucks. And I was able to get an MSI for 900 and something dollars. An MSI uh, RTX, I'll show you the one I got. As a matter of fact, I got it right here. Where is it? Uh, the wrong windows. Oh, this one, no, no this, this is it. So this is the MSI of some other things. There we go. It's like the small, one of the smallest models they make, the Gaming X Trio you know, and the price difference between this and their big one is a lot. And the, the speed difference between this and their like, you know, flagship model is like 1%. This one is also something that I would prefer to have because it's not three and a half slots or four slots, it's three slots. So I've got room in my case to put other things. Three slots is a big deal for me. I don't really want a four slot card or a three and a half slot card or some big chunky card. I want to be able to put some stuff in my system. It also, uh, overclocks really well with an undervolt. So I actually did a little brought the clocks. I don't know. I'm, I'm running like a little bit lower because I want it to stay nice and cool. So that's what I ended up with. And I could have just bought this thing on eBay in the first place, but that's not how it went, is it? <laughs> Wasted a lot of my time and I don't have a lot of time these days. So that was a huge waste of my time. I figured the least I could do is make a video and get something out of it. I kind of like making these videos where I rant about all this stuff because I'm constantly fussing and tinkering because I've realized something. Tinkering and fussing are how real things get done. A lot of people look at me and they're like, why are you always fussing and tinkering? And I'm like, why do you always call me when something breaks? Because I know what's broken because I've fussed and tinkered with everything inside out. So if something's like doing something weird, I'm like, oh, I've fussed with that before. I know how it works. It's important that the tinkerers and the people who fuss are the ones who end up building and creating everything. That's also why everything works so well around here. And I've got the stuff I want all wired up correctly. It didn't just happen. It had to be fussed into place. So this was, um, Excessive fussing for, I feel like, nothing. I'm wondering, what did I learn? Other than the fact that I feel a little bit dehydrated. I'm making too many videos in one sitting. But now I've got a question for you. This copy of Windows XP that I have right here in my hands, XP Professional, brand new, in the box, with a holographic uh, CD right there. How much would you expect to pay for that? Don't answer! What if we also throw in this brand new copy of Windows 7 Home Premium? Then how much would you expect to pay? Don't answer! Wait till you see these new features. Nah, that's enough. That's my impersonation for the day. I'm going to throw this stuff on the website. I recently got a box of all this stuff and uh, I wanted a few things in there, but I got the box and I got too many of these things. I did, can't believe there was like a huge stack of this stuff in the bottom. I don't even think the person knew they were there or cared. So I looked on eBay and they're like going for 38 to 40 bucks a piece. So I'll throw them on epicpants.com. You can go over there and grab one of these while you're grabbing your mouse and your keyboard. Grab a copy of one. I got a few of these boxes. And you know what? I'll also start throwing some of this stuff on there because I need to, I always need to, I have to figure out how to set that clock permanently. Every time I turn my light on, I have to set it again. It's plugged into the wrong plug. Uh, yes, I'll start throwing some more of this stuff on there, some of the old hardware and stuff, so I can get myself just cleared out of a few things. So all that's going to go on epicpants.com. Head over there. Uh, happy mouse for half price on mice as well. See you in the comments. Mm -hmm.